2017 during the Easter time, the most popular channel CNN came out with an interesting documentary on Jesus, faith, fact, forgery, you can name it, CNN cross-examined Christianity from different angles. They have taken views from different walks of life, different scholars, different uh, ethnic backgrounds. You name it, CNN tried its level best to dissect Christianity. Interestingly, I came across one episode that is about St. Thomas. He's the disciple famous for a lack of faith seeing is believing or else. But he is transformed by the sight of the risen Christ. My God. A convinced skeptic is the strongest kind of believer. But did the most reluctant apostle triumph over fear to take the word of Jesus from the Holy Land to India? A direct line to the very source of Christian faith. Is it possible the disciple famous for his lack of faith brought a form of Christianity here nearly 2,000 years ago? Jesus told the apostles, go out of Jerusalem to the entire world and preach the good news. So Thomas decided to go to India. Go and make disciples of all nations. But there is little in the Acts of the Apostles about what happens next. In the Acts of the Apostles, we learn about Peter and Paul and many others, but not about Thomas. Thomas simply vanishes from the pages of the New Testament. But there is another account of the life of Thomas that picks up where the Bible narrative stops. Dr. Nicola Denzi Lewis has come to the British Library, where there is a rare copy of an ancient book, The Acts of Thomas. This text is written in Syriac, and that's significant because it's very closely related to Aramaic, and Aramaic is the language which Jesus spoke with his disciples. So this is a really, really fabulous piece to the puzzle in uncovering a little more information than we had before about what Thomas was up to. And the story goes that after Jesus' death, the disciples are getting together and they're trying to decide who goes where, and they actually draw lots. The disciples believed drawing lots would allow God to decide where they should go to spread the word. Thomas gets India. I cannot go. I do not wish to go. I have a human moment. Thomas says, I'd rather not go to India. I mean, that's a whale of a long way from here. And who says that I would even be able to understand the people at the end of the earth? After a night of prayer, Thomas finally accepts his lot. I go wherever you wish. Oh, Lord Jesus. The Acts of Thomas narrates Thomas's journey from Jerusalem to India by boat. He lands in the southwest corner of coastal India, what is today Kerala. Kerala, southwest India. Every year, members of an ancient Christian sect gather at the Mar Thoma Shrine. They celebrate the most significant event in the history of their church. The arrival of the Apostle Thomas, who they believe came here in 52 AD. That was a fascinating uh, documentary because it was one of its kind about an ethnic community in India, the southern tip of India, and an international media is talking about it. Curiosity developed into more details and I found out that the only man who represented the Syrian Catholic Church, uh, for that matter, the Aramaic tradition, 
was Father Joseph J. Palaki. And I have the pleasure of meeting him today here in Houston. CNN, as we all know, it's, it's a secular channel. Uh, they have their own views on various issues. But the documentary they came out was a very fascinating one on many respects. It's a story of the importance of faith, reason and doubt. What is the motive behind CNN's uh, uh, documentary on that subject? Okay, CNN was trying to tell the story of Jesus uh, through the people who were closely associated with him. Mm -hmm. Starting from Mary Magdalene, uh, St. Peter, and then they also chose St. Thomas. So when they decided to create a segment on St. Thomas, they saw my Aramaic project website, because it deals with Aramaic language and they saw my writings and finally they decided to use me as a resource person. So, so they asked me where should we go? Uh, their team was getting ready to go to India but they didn't have a proper idea who to meet, where to go. So I directed the traffic to the East Syriac sector which is the Sri Malabar sector. So the first name that came to my mind was Dr. Thomas Kunamagal. So they went to Kerala and they charted their program accordingly. So the focus was on St. Thomas Christians in Kerala. They knew that there is a community mm -hmm. that holds in St. Thomas as a father of faith. Mm -hmm. And it was not just an ideational thing, it was intensely mm -hmm. personal. Mm -hmm. Because we St. Thomas Christians believe that St. Thomas came to Kerala you don't have to go for in search of proofs. Mm -hmm. There are many people who are still going in search of proofs. Mm -hmm. But he is in us. He is within us. He, is the, he carries the DNA mm -hmm. of our faith. Mm -hmm. So the CNN, the production team understood the seriousness of our faith mm -hmm. and especially how we were still using Syriac and make language. Mm -hmm. So that was the link between me mm -hmm. and the team that we are still holding the Syriac language, the language of their, their mother tongue, mm -hmm. we still keep on. There are still priests in Kerala who chant the institution narrative, this is my body, this is my blood, in the Aramaic language, just the way Jesus did at the Last Supper. Most remarkable of all, elements of the Thomas Christian liturgy are performed in the language of earliest Christianity. The St. Thomas Christian churches even today follow that ancient biblical practice of men and women sitting separately and women covering their heads. There are two different sets of songs that we continue to sing. One is called the Ramban part, Song of the Ramban, which narrates the activities of St. Thomas, his missionary activities in Kerala. And the other is Margam Kali, Dance of the Way, which is still being danced in Kerala. It seems extraordinary, maybe even unlikely to us, that a song could survive for 2,000 years. But we have to realize that in antiquity, in the Indian culture, there were trained village bards who would learn these songs, and these songs would be passed down from generation to generation orally. And in that way, they were very stable, and it's completely plausible that a song could have a very ancient background. St. Thomas Christians in Kerala also maintain an ancient dance tradition. The songs tell us that the Apostle was well received wherever he went. People welcomed him and received his message and accepted the baptism from the Apostle and Christian communities grew. But when it comes to the Eastern Christianity, people want very specific proof, very scientific proof, very archaeological proof. Why? those same standard is not applicable when it comes to other parts of the Christianity like in Europe as we go through the CNN the commentary we can see that they have approached the subject in three forms one is the scientific approach and the second one is the uh, archaeological evidences and the third one was the the oral traditions mm -hmm. people from Harvard Duke Brown or uh, uh, Oxford even Oxford and uh, Notre Dame uh, 
name it, you know, many eminent professors from the Ivy League participated in it and they contributed it and they all are of the same view that although there is no material evidence to prove the existence of St. Thomas in the Kerala shores back then, but, but still the nature and the culture and the heritage of that community is more than uh, enough to you know believe or uh, to substantiate that uh, it is indeed a authentic activity of a person. But that is the that is the way they uh, you know come to a conclusion. But that is not enough for a skeptic, and we have more skeptics back in India than uh, the Western world. So like you know many historians even uh, ridicule the fact that you know St. Thomas is uh, uh, coming to you Kerala is uh, impossible because back then Kerala was just a uh, you know uh, a forest uh, land and there was no civilization back uh, then over there so how do you look at those kind of uh, uh, sarcasm or uh, you know or, uh, or, uh, or approach by eminent historians uh, uh, that uh, India or Kerala uh, represent or uh, respect? We can respect their view and the fact that we too don't have material evidence. We were not very good at keeping material evidences too. Uh, CNN's conclusion was it is possible mm -hmm. that St. Thomas must have gone to India. No, no, they, they use two words. One is possible or plausible. Plausible. The way they, re, they framed uh, their program, that conclusion is quite valid. Mm -hmm. Um, we can also say it is possible and plausible. One idea, uh, when you mentioned that St. Thomas was daring to go all the way to India, mm -hmm. uh, Kerala. Kerala was not unknown. Yes. Kerala was known to the Middle East through the spice trade. Mm -hmm. Spices and aromatics however, were being brought to the Roman world as a result of the Indian Ocean trade, as, as a result of connections to places. Like Second, there's a p hypothesis that Jewish traders who settled in Kerala a first point of contact for Thomas might have been Jewish traders who spoke his language and shared his faith. Because this was the center of spice trade, the Jewish uh, community settled there. And there's a Jewish town in Kochi even today. There were Jewish colonies in Kerala. So the seven and a half churches that we are talking about, probably they were Jewish colonies. Uh, you know, again back to the CNN uh, interview, uh, the documentary, they have uh, on the on the archaeological front, they have come across some evidences uh, on the ports of uh, Musaris. Yeah, Patanam. Uh, yeah, Patanam. Hmm. Pottery fragments have been found, thousands of which are clearly from the Mediterranean world, particularly wine amphora, that's wine containers on a scale that eclipses most other sites in India. But when it comes to Jesus' divinity, people always have a question. Yes. Whether he's a messenger or a guru or a mystic, but only St. Thomas' question have brought out some answers. Yes. And uh, Jesus himself witnessed to him and uh, he said, My Lord, my God. That very statement is the only statement in the Bible, in the whole canonical Bible, where we can see Jesus being declared as a God. Would you think St. Thomas is getting his due weightage in the Christian world? A tricky question. Uh, the answer is I don't. Because St. Peter uh, was associated with Rome, and Rome was associated with political power, the narrative of early Christianity was kept on focusing on the West. Okay. They completely forgot. They forgot about what was happening here. Mm -hmm. As you clearly mentioned, St. Thomas was the first one to apply the word Allah mm -hmm. to Jesus. Ma wa Those mm -hmm. are the words that St. Thomas spoke. Mm -hmm. My Lord mm -hmm. and my God. Mm -hmm. uh, compared with St. Peter, Peter made a profession of faith. Jesus asked, uh, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And initially they said, oh, you are a prophet, you are a St. John the Baptist reborn, or this or that. But then Jesus pointed to them, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And it was St. Peter who said, you are the Messiah. Mishiha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is the word Mishiha. Mm -hmm. Now, Mishiha is a politically loaded term. Mm -hmm. 
it is not Allah, mm -hmm. but Jesus acknowledged it, mm -hmm. um, appreciated him mm -hmm. for saying that because Jewish people have been waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, see Peter acknowledged that this one is the Messiah that we have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Jesus was happy with the answer mm -hmm. and he acknowledged it and appreciated it and he said, I will give you power. Mm -hmm. But St. Thomas was the first one to use the word Allah. Mm -hmm. And when you think mm -hmm. that their God was Yahweh, Mm -hmm. For every Jewish person, the God is Yahweh, mm -hmm. and they have been, they grew up in that strong monotheistic understanding of God. Mm -hmm. But Saint Thomas is looking at Jesus and say, uses the word Allah. Mm -hmm. To him, means you are you are torpedoing the existing concept of God. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh, and then this also is God. Mm -hmm. Now Trinity, the concept of Trinity had not evolved yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That took some time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. later, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Pentecost and all that. Mm -hmm. So it was a gradual revelation. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas jumped the gun mm -hmm. and told in front of his friends, that mm -hmm. this is God, mm -hmm. Allah, mm -hmm. which is a very, very important statement. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, mm -hmm. he did not get credit Mm -hmm. Jesus appreciated him. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, "Oh, Jesus appreciated him saying for saying that. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you believe because mm -hmm. you saw me. Mm -hmm. But those who believe without seeing me are also blessed." He said. Mm -hmm. So he was referring to you and me. Mm -hmm. But nobody else made that statement. Mm -hmm. Saint Thomas, through that Marwala, created a revolution mm -hmm. in the history and not only of uh, Christianity, mm -hmm. but in the in the understanding of God mm -hmm. and this understanding will evolve into Trinity. Pentecost had not happened yet mm -hmm. so this eventually will evolve into Yahweh the Father, mm -hmm. Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit three persons yet one God. Mm -hmm. So he, he initiated that, that conversation mm -hmm. of breaking the strictly monotheistic idea of God as Yahweh mm -hmm. into three persons, yet mm -hmm. one God. Mm -hmm. Did he get credit for that? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. We definitely need to be more proud of our St. Thomas heritage. We don't need to go for material evidences. Who has material evidence from the first century? Do we have ancient sources that attest to their antiquity all the way to the first century? No. But we don't have that kind of evidence for Christian presence anywhere. So we should really be proud. There is, since you brought back CNN again, there is one area that CNN researchers did not look into. Mm -hmm. That is liturgy, mm -hmm. our kurban. To this day, St. Thomas Christians perform parts of the liturgy in Syriac the language of early Christianity, close to that spoken by Jesus. Because liturgy is sacred text. Mm -hmm. You don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. You have it, and then you hand it over for mm -hmm. generation after generation without manipulating anything. Mm -hmm. And our Kurbana mm -hmm. mentions St. Thomas mm -hmm. within the Mass, in the commemoration hymn, we refer to him as the father of our faith, mm -hmm. which is a serious matter. We commemorate Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, and Saint Thomas, mm -hmm. and the apostles, and, so, and the apostles especially. Mm -hmm. We say by name Saint Thomas. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on. Mm -hmm. That is our evidence that that faith, that Saint Thomas is the father of our faith, that our DNA, we mm -hmm. share the mm -hmm. same DNA, mm -hmm. is is to be taken very serious seriously. Mm -hmm. So, but yet. We don't tell the world. Mm -hmm. And look at our younger people. Mm -hmm. They are ready to learn Syriac chants. Mm -hmm. They say, we want to tell our friends that we know mm -hmm. language that Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. We want to sing in that language. They want to find their roots. Mm -hmm. And they want to be proud of it. Over 400 years after declaring St. Thomas Christians heretics, the Roman Catholic Church made Thomas the patron saint of India. In 1986, Pope John Paul II visits India and holds an audience in Mylapore at the shrine dedicated to the martyrdom of St. Thomas. In terms of history of Christianity in India, I think that declaration of Thomas as a patron saint of India 
gave a recognition to the long history or long-held history of Thomas Christians. The story of St. Thomas in the Gospel is a story of the importance of faith, reason and doubt. Doubt and faith are two sides of the same coin. My Lord! My God! I am just uh, uh, conducting this uh, interview on the lines of CNN's findings. If a international, secular channel is uh, coming out with a documentary on an ethnic community in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the end of the world, there is some substance to it and that created curiosity in me and I, I find that uh, the world is uh, looking at you and the world is recognizing <laughs> you and the uh, intellectual circle is, uh, uh, is uh, ready to accept the fact that this is uh, one of the uh, miracles uh, happened in the Christian world and um, uh, that's what the whole purpose of this conversation and um, I'm so glad that I could meet you here in uh, Houston, Sierra uh, Malabar International Convention. Thank you so thank much. You for, so much. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I'm so happy. This was an intellectually stimulating conversation, and I hope uh, the viewers will have a chance to redirect their thoughts and explore more. From where we stopped, they can go further. Okay. And you never know what the outcomes will be. Okay. God bless. God bless you. Thank you for the work that you do. Okay.